Chicken tacos should only be trusted to chicken professionals. That's where we come in. Introducing Zaxby's new chicken finger tacos. One comes with pico de gallo and creamy chipotle ranch. And the other comes with bacon, lettuce, tomato, and avocado ranch. Chicken experts since 1990. Chicken taco experts since now. Order yours today in the Zax Rewards app. Woo saucy! Zaxby's. While you're listening, go to arcpodnet.com slash members and support our efforts. Let's get to the show. You're listening to the Archaeology Podcast Network. You're listening to the Archaeology Show. TAS goes behind the headlines to bring you the real stories about archaeology and the history around us. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the Archaeology Show, episode 181. I just wanted to jump in before we start here, because Rachel and I have had a super long week, (laughs) and we just, honestly... We just are taking a break from recording this week, and we're going to come back strong with a news episode next week with some really great articles. For this episode, though, we're going to play something that has never been in this feed, and it is the audio from episode two of our live show. And we ended up having to stop that because of internet and travel reasons, but hopefully we're going to bring that back soon. So take a listen to this. You know, it's live and unedited, so there are some inconsistencies. (laughs) Just bear with us, but it's fun. It's good content. And we have on guest Andrew Kinkella. So enjoy this show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Archaeology Show, the Archaeology Variety Show. I did this last time. I don't even know what this is called. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Because you keep thinking it's our weekly show. I don't even know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I keep thinking it's something that it's not. So uh, <laughs> anyway, this is episode two. If you want to see episode one and you're a member of the Archaeology Podcast Network, uh, click go over to your member pages at arcpodnet.com forward slash members. Uh, you can do that just to see. But if you just go to arcpodnet.com and click on the member link, then you can go to the live events page and watch um, any of our past live events. And there's a few of them uh, building up on the page now. So, yeah, we are, again, this is episode two. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm Chris Webster. Chris Redden. <laughs> and this is our RV that we live in. That's what you're going to see as our, as our backdrop yeah. <laughs> yeah, this whole time. Is what um, it is. <laughs> that's... That's Indiana Jones, in case you're wondering. He's going to come into play a little bit later in our tale. So, um, yeah, so where are we right now? So we are in San Luis Obispo, which is on the sort of central coast of California. Mm -hmm. Uh, We are here, and we were here last time, too, weren't we? For the last live show? Yes, we were. Um, We're here because, well, Wild Note is headquartered here, and I work for them, and Chris consults with them. So we have a lot of people here to see and work with and hang out, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're parked on one of their properties, which is amazing, Um, having a place to stay for basically free. So it's it's been really great. Yeah, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, headed back to Reno, actually, this weekend. We'll be there for a week, and uh, we're getting some more solar panels installed on the roof and some more batteries Mm -hmm. so we can be more um, independent. Yes. And uh, Yeah, we love to, like, be out in the middle of nowhere in the desert or whatever. So the goal is to be able to do more of that. For sure. For sure. And then after that, we are uh, headed up to Oregon. So the next time we talk to you, we will be in Oregon. I'm not sure if we'll be on the Oregon coast yet or not. (laughs) We might be in Eugene, but uh, either way, we'll be in Oregon when we talk to you guys next Mm -hmm. time. So, yep, yeah. And we're also uh, on the way to Reno this weekend. We're staying overnight in the RV because you can do that through this thing called Harvest Host Mm -hmm. at one of our famous favorite wineries. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. It's in yeah. Lodi, which does like Old Vines Inns. And if anybody's a fan of wine, <laughs> we love Old Vines Inns and they're really good in Lodi. And this yeah. winery we like to go to called Clinker Brick is there. So they let you just park for free behind yeah. their facility. It's just like a gravel lot, so it's nothing fancy. But hey, free parking spot, do a little wine tasting. Sounds like a fun Saturday travel day slash evening overnight stay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's the plan. All right. Well, before we bring on our guest today, let's mm-hmm. look and see what happened in the last two weeks on the Archaeology Podcast Network. So you guys should be able to see my screen right now, and I'm just going to uh, talk about these real quick. So over at arcpodnet.com or archaeologypodcastnetwork.com, you can see uh, this feed right at the top here. This is our all shows feed, which you can subscribe to. You can just search for the all shows feed. Uh, for Archaeology Podcast Network on your favorite podcast app, and it's there. Mm -hmm. But this basically shows everything that comes out in order. If you ever want to see just one show and and that feed, you can click on the shows down here. Just click on the logo, Mm -hmm. and it takes you straight over to that show's feed. So in the last couple weeks, uh, we had 
a few things come out. We had, um, uh, I'm looking at our little notes here and the timeline. Okay. Well, just today we had pay transparency and CRM come out. The CRM Art podcast episode 235. Oh, it wasn't out yet when I yeah. made the list last <laughs> I was night. Like, Why was is it? this on here? <laughs> <laughs> so this is what happens when we're prepared. <laughs> I know. In fact, our guest Andrew, we'll talk about this, yeah. is on the CRM Archaeology podcast, and we talked about it, and it's. You know, the same thing that's going around a lot of industries, like why shouldn't you be able to talk about your pay and mm-hmm. um, you should be, employers should be more transparent about what you are getting paid so other people can see it and just yeah. like all kinds of things. So good stuff to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, those kind of conversations need to keep happening. Yeah, for stuff. sure. Yeah. And, and then the Life and Ruins crew had a live show uh, back on March 12th, I think, which again, you can watch that if you're a member of the APN. If you're not a member of the APN, there's a little button down there that says become a member right mm-hmm. on the screen you're looking at. And you can click on that. It takes you right to our member pages. Mm-hmm. So you can you can see what that's all about. Yeah, it's but, cool to see it in person because Simon was in an airport the whole time. Because yeah. he's like in the process of getting out of uh, Ukraine. So yeah. it, you kind of understand why the audio quality is what it is in the podcast when you can see yeah. the video version of it. For sure. For yeah. sure. And then the Dirt podcast had a, uh, a guest that they had on, Pat Edwards, talking about archaeology and science fiction. We did a science fiction. sorry yeah. anthropology yeah. yeah oh that's a topic that may come up again later <laughs> and, and then we had <laughs> and then we did on the archaeology show timelines episode which we usually take either yeah, usually we take an event and we see what else happened in the world around that event but this time we looked at the year 1100 uh, CE in North America and mm-hmm. said what was happening around that time because 1100 CE is actually kind of a strange time when when things were rising and falling yeah there's a lot of big things going on in north america so yeah. it was an interesting time period to look at yep mm-hmm. rock art had on uh cynthia waldman who writes children's books and she incorporates a lot of rock art into her work uh architect cool. we, we talked about some uh, a new thing invented by an archaeologist actually called the paleo digger which is a combination of a track hoe kind of thing with a 50 centimeter diameter bucket <laughs> auger and a computer control to basically tell it to go down 10 centimeters and come back up. <laughs> That's like my dream. Yeah. I never want to dig another shovel. To I know. Well, I don't because I, you know, left the East coast well, and, Midwest <laughs> and hooked to that whole thing is an auto screener. It's like this screen, oh, a circular screen. screen. Either. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. That's crazy. so cool. <laughs> yeah. Heritage Voices had an episode called decolonizing the museum of us. Mm-hmm. Um, just check that out. The Dirt brought back one of their um, archive episodes, but actually it's not an archive episode for the APN because it's before they came on the APN. Oh. They have about 40 some mm-hmm. odd episodes that that happened before they joined the Archaeology Podcast mm-hmm. Network. So that's one of those. It's all about sugar and things like that mm-hmm. and the, the history think, behind it. I think you skipped. Did you skip Ruins? The uh, Mississippian Missionaries? Oh, that's coming up. Okay. Yeah, okay I'm actually sorry. looking at the APN's feed. Oh, okay. I'm looking at the list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They had a Ruins had another episode, Mississippi Missionaries, talking mm-hmm. about uh, uh, Cahokia and some other things. And that was a that was, was really cool entertaining. <laughs> we did, of course, our live show and we dropped that onto our feed. So episode mm-hmm. one, so you can hear the audio of that if you don't want to become a member back on episode 162 of the archaeology show. Mm-hmm. But we won't be doing that yeah. normally. That was just for that one. So that right. you guys could hear like or so that our listeners could hear what kind of thing we're doing over here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then. Uh, we had another rock art episode talking about semiotics. It, it was actually a really interesting episode, rock art episode 73. Just take a listen to that. And and finally, on the last CRM art podcast two weeks ago, we talked about um, a new CRM field school. I'll have to write down whether or not on Wednesdays I actually we, talked about uh, the yeah, episode. Yeah, I can't out. remember if we <laughs> talked about CRM art last week or not. Uh, yeah. or two weeks ago. We, we might have because it comes out that I day. Don't know. Yeah. But I don't Who remember. Knows? <laughs> so. Anyway, yeah. you can find all that in, like I said, if you want to just go to a show's page, you can click on that show's page. Um, and once you get there, you can you know see the show notes, see all the links that are posted. Uh, you can see all kinds of stuff. It's pretty cool. So, all right. Cool. Let me go ahead and stop sharing. Come back to here. Okay. So, we are now going to bring on our guest for the day. Yeah. And... Just make sure I'm in the right spot here. <laughs> All right. So we're going to bring our guest today, and our guest is Andrew Kinkella. So give us just one minute while we do that. He has to be invited. He's like a vampire. If you don't invite him in, he can't come in. So <laughs> I mean, that's true. Anybody that you invite in. <laughs> Maybe not just specifically Andrew. Hello. <laughs> Andrew. Invited in. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nice, nice. I guess we'll let you in. That's right. Oh, it's too late. So Rachel, your souls are gone. Sorry. <laughs> nice, nice. So, Rachel, if you want to lean in just a little bit, because uh, this actually cuts us off a little bit. If you're on a browser that's mm-hmm. not full screen right now, go ahead and make the browser full screen so uh, so we don't get it cut off too much, because this mm-hmm. interface will dynamically change as you're uh, looking at it. So I need to remember to look at you guys, not you guys. Right. All right. So... <laughs> Andrew, yes. why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? We'll start with your, as I mentioned, on the CRM Archaeology podcast as a host as of like, what, November last year or something like that? That sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, yeah something like that. We had you on as a guest because you're a friend of one of our other hosts, Heather. Right. And so we brought you on as a guest, but just tell us a little about what you do and where you work. Sure. Uh, so I am a full-time community college professor at Moore Park College, which is in Southern California. And then in terms of my specialties, I'm, I'm kind of divided. My, my brain's kind of divided half and half. Half the time, I'm a Maya archaeologist and with specialties in working in the cenotes. Those are kind of mini lakes in the middle of the jungle that you can dive in and maybe you'll find stuff that the ancient Maya oh, threw in there. Yeah, We totally went in one in Mexico. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're cool. They're pretty yeah. nice. Yeah. And especially mm-hmm. you're in the jungle, it's super hot and it's just like the greatest mm-hmm. place yeah. to kind of just cool down, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's pretty neat. So that's, that's sort of the thing that would be written on my tombstone for archaeology. You know what I mean? We all have kind of the thing. Um, that's yeah. it. But then I also spend quite a bit of time working on Southern California archaeology with my students. Um, and okay. I've done that for maybe the better part of 15 years or, or so where I run a field school. Um, that's Saturdays only, and we have three classes. We have an excavation class one semester, then we have a mapping class one semester, and then we have a lab class one semester. Nice. Oh, that's very cool. That is really cool. I like that structure. So you get a little bit of all the pieces. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, and since it's all day Saturday too, they get a pretty good uh, feel for it. You know, they yeah. it, it's it's a full semester. They're out there maybe let's say 15 different Saturdays, you know. So I'm I've been really happy with it. it it's wow, uh that's and, great. Yeah, a lot of my students have done really well. Like Heather. Heather was one of my <laughs> old students way back when. <laughs> so so it counts as a field school, not it, as an actual class. It's it, it's one of those happy mediums where it's both. Like like all you have to oh. do is sign up for for a class. And I, I will also brag that I think it's probably the cheapest way into an archaeology <laughs> field school there is. Since, uh-huh. since we're at a community college, it's like $45 a unit. It's a three unit class. That's what, you know, 135 bucks plus a book plus That's a trial. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, my field school in Peru was way more than that. <laughs> yeah. My Belize yeah. one was too, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a cheap, cheap backdoor way into to archaeology, learning real skills. So I, I've been really mm-hmm. happy with it. Awesome. Oh. So what let's talk about your uh, you have some other outreach efforts and we will link to some of this on. Actually, if you go to the members pages, you'll be able to see some of the links for these things uh, probably tomorrow after this thing processes and I can be able to get it up there. But you also have a YouTube channel. Can Kella, what is it? Can Kella teaches archaeology? Tell us yeah. about that. Okay, so um, about three years ago or so, I just had this moment in my office where I was just like, you know what? I'm doing it. And uh, <laughs> because I was worried. That's how this started. Yes. It's, <laughs> you know, anybody I talk to who has sort of a media outreach aspect of archaeology, or I think probably really any yeah. of the sciences, it's the same thing. You, you think about doing it for a long time. You're kind of reticent. You kind of worry. What if I suck? What if it's terrible? What if they hate me? <laughs> and then you just have this moment where you're like, screw it. I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, and then. <laughs> Um, and then you operate kind of in darkness for a few months where you're like, I don't know, this might <laughs> yeah. be horrible. Who knows? Yeah. And and yeah. then it sort of slowly starts to catch on. I got to tell you guys, I worked for every subscriber of my first like thousand, you know, I mean, nice. every single. Um, and now it's started to catch, <laughs> catch. Right. You know, we could we could have a conversation for an hour about how this goes, because I'm sure you guys yeah. have the same experiences you know yeah. you never quite know um yeah and so it just sort of started to slowly catch fire and now it's its own thing and um i'm really i'm really happy with it like it i i always tell people it's like if if you want to know what i'm like just look at my youtube channel you know it, that's me <laughs> talking like if you want me for a 
to give a presentation or something like that, well, that's what you're going to get, you know, uh, <laughs> love it or hate it. Like that's what, that's what, that's what it is. And so, um, I, I ask my students all the time what they want to know about archeology. span And that helps a lot. You know, they're like, Oh, mm-hmm. Kinkella, I'm really curious about, you know, whatever it be, middle range theory, whatever it may be. <laughs> and I'll be like, okay, I'll do a, a YouTube channel, um, video on it. And they're really short. They're only like, most of them are under 10 minutes, five minutes, six minutes. Yeah. You know, so that's what I was just yeah. going to ask it is like, what kind of topics are you covering? Anything. What I find Anything. over time, the ones that are the most popular are the real general ones. Like what is archeology, span you know, stuff right. like that. But I try and do, uh, something, something for everyone. Uh, cool. yeah, which is, which is, uh, it's worked out over time where I, I think I have eight or nine different, um, sort of themes on the YouTube channel and people can go to whatever they think is interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Hey, before we go on, I need to remind Amy, uh, who's listening here, Amy, after this segment here, we are bringing you on screen. Well, you don't have to actually go on screen. You can turn your camera off, but we're going to invite you in to play our game after this. So don't forget, I'm just making sure <laughs> you're aware of that. So, <laughs> Yeah, and it's actually kind of cool because I, I, we mentioned this last time how we met Amy. Actually, uh, she's been a fan of the APN for a while at the Society for California Archaeology meetings a few weeks ago, which is also where I we met you for the first time. Like we've right. been on a podcast since like November. But, yeah, and then we all went out to dinner, and I think you were sitting next to Amy. <laughs> right? Yes, yeah, she, uh, she she was she was right right next to me. I think on on the left, you know, and it, that was so great. Yeah. Being, uh, sort of meeting everyone, you know, you see these names, we hear each other, you know, on the on the podcast. Yeah but meeting each other in person was was really really great yeah. yeah it's really cool to form those connections in person i i love the world that we live in now where you can be friends with anybody yeah but it's so nice to do it in person it's yeah it's so it's so nice and i and i i don't know if you guys feel the same but talking talking with you guys and and the other hosts like bill and you know and heather mm-hmm. it it we f- I feel like we're our own little club, our own little group, you know, that we've <laughs> we've shared so much more with each other before we actually meet in person. It's just really nice. Yeah. Yeah. It is really neat how that uh, how that all works out. So yeah. let's mention uh, your book that you just had published. Yes, I'm yeah. a published author. Uh, I can't believe that author. my management wow. allowed me to go on this show. I don't know. <laughs> I'm in the presence of two published oh, authors. Hey, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, j- very similar to um, when I had that moment where I'm like, I'm doing it. Same thing with the textbook. I'm like, you know what, man, I'm doing it. So uh, yeah. I and just a hop, skip and a jump like a year later, I wrote like Kinkella, uh, there it is. That's awesome. Archaeology is awesome. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, I just, the reason why I did it is I think the same reason so many people in academia write a textbook. It's like, there's not one that you like, you know? And, and I kind of have had this idea in archaeology. I'm like, you know, I just want a textbook that's stone simple and just really straightforward and cheap and fun. You know, mm-hmm. and that's what I was going going for. And luckily, the the publishing house I went with with Kendall Hunt, they were super mm-hmm. cool about that. They totally got it. Uh, and they were also able to add QR codes in. So as you read wow. the chapter, there's a QR code and you can use your oh, phone and it goes to my YouTube channel. So it all kind of awesome. like... I- relates wow i was actually going to kind of make a joke but now i think this is real i was going to say isn't this just transcripts of your youtube channel it sounds like it might actually be (laughs) it's 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 organized transcripts of my youtube channel with a lot more if that makes sense right right. uh, plus editing (laughs) right and and what's funny is it depends on the chapter too i noticed where i'm like oh i could do these other videos on my youtube channel that i haven't done i haven't really done anything on archaeology and the law in my YouTube channel and people tend to ask that. So I'm sure that kind of stuff will come soon. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what you're talking about because the book I wrote for left coast press before they were bought by the conglomerate Rulledge, but they, uh, they, yeah. uh, But the book I wrote was based on my blog posts, but I added at least 50 words to each one of those blog posts before (laughs) I put it in the book. So I'm just saying, (laughs) yeah, uh, it's totally different. I added sort of a front and a back. And again, it depended on the chapter. Some of the chapters were, you know, I had so much from the YouTube channel, yeah. but other chapters were kind yeah. of the wild west, you know? So it was, there you go. it, it was, uh, 
again, about a year of work. It, the, the idea was, I think every, every month, I, I would have a meeting every month with the publishers and I had to have kind of two chapters done and I'd yeah. show them and that's how, that's how nice. it went. Mm-hmm. Cool. So I saw recently on your socials that your agent got you a, uh, a video gig. What's that all about? Oh, well, <laughs> oh, again, my other people <laughs> on my, in the Andrew Kinkella media conglomerate. Uh, right, right. Uh, yeah, you think oh, 16 Rutledge people behind it? your camera? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Dude, Rutledge is nothing. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I work with this group called Past Preservers, and um, yeah. they, they also have been been really, really great. Around the same time where I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to do it for my YouTube channel. I was also like, mm-hmm. I'm just going to do it. For the media stuff, because I would get these offers every so often just on like they would email me. The funniest one was I was like, why are you why are you contacting me? And they were like, we saw you had really good rate my professors. And, <laughs> and so that's I'm like, OK, that that doesn't really mean I'm sure. going to be good on television. <laughs> sure. But, uh, so I got in contact with past preservers and they um, send me out on gigs. Again, there is so much. Um, denial and refusal in that world mm-hmm. there's so there's so many jobs you don't get you know for the for the handful mm-hmm. you do yeah. but um yeah. that's been that's been really r- really fun and i'm not super familiar with past preservers can you like explain what they do and what it is sure um past preservers is really like an agency really just just like an actor okay. would be okay. um represented by united artists or whatever you know past uh, preservers okay. does that for academics who want to uh be on be considered for television okay. shows that will ultimately end up on like the discovery channel or the science channel or that kind of stuff gotcha mm-hmm. yeah. okay that makes sense yeah they're starting to get approached uh Nile Nigel Heatherton uh, yeah. runs that actually. Yeah, Nigel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've had him on. I think he's been on Sierra Mark podcast. He's been on a couple podcasts in the past. Yeah, he's a cool guy. And uh, I always think, man, if I end up in in Cairo where he lives, I'm like, I'm going to look Nigel up and and sleep on his floor because that's all I need, really. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, but no, they they're getting approached more and more because people know that they're a talent pool for this kind of thing. They are. They they fill the total niche where there was nothing before, and it's great because yeah. behind behind the scenes there'd be academics who would do this stuff for free, you know. And it's like, mm-hmm. dude, they're using yeah. you, you know. Yeah. And your so, time is worth money. Absolutely. And so Nigel does a really really great job of kind of looking out for his flock, you know, making sure that things That's are awesome. professional. Um, making sure that they're sort of just just run with due diligence. It's I, I've been mm-hmm. super happy. Nigel's great. Cool. Yeah, I, I got to point out the uh, what looks like a photo photocopy uh, push pin to your wall of your book cover back there. That's <laughs> right uh, there. That's <laughs> I was shocked you saw that. Um, you, you know what's so funny? I got that like three days ago. That that came oh, in the mail, and I'm like, dude, I got to put that up. Uh, th- I'm surprised it's not bigger. <laughs> the whole wall. You guys, yeah, can you get me an eight by ten feet? Um, <laughs> yeah. Can you just make it wallpaper? Yeah. No, it's uh, Kendall Hunt, man. <laughs> they know how to treat their authors because every so often I'll get something like that in the mail. Like it just showed up. They're like, "Hey, um, you know, yeah. good for you. Your cool. book's published. Here's a little, you know, <laughs> like screen, a little uh, framed image of it." I'm like, "Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool." Yeah, it's nice. yeah, Amy in the chat says says it needs to look like a movie poster. Like, Actually, yes. yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. Easy. All right. Well, what's uh, what's next up for you? We will talk about the APN here in a minute. But outside of that, what's next? Uh, what, what do you got coming down the line? You know, it's just it's 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 more of the same. I'm living the good life. Look at it. Uh-huh. Huh? <laughs> you know, um, and and in honesty, I feel so fortunate. I mean, I um. I'm uh, I'm so excited to be part of the APN. That's been just so much yeah. fun to, uh, doing the stuff with Nigel's great, the textbook. And, mm-hmm. and after you write one book, you're like, ooh, I could do another. You know, like because you've kind of you've seen it's like having one. It's like I've had I've had one kid. I could I could mm-hmm. have another kid. Uh, <laughs> sure. Because everything is kind of impl- I already have the high chair, you know. So yeah. mm-hmm. so yeah. Uh, I, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of writing another another book. Uh, I'll definitely do more YouTube stuff uh, yeah. soon. But, uh, I've been I've been nice. I've been putting up a little more slowly the last couple of months. It'll probably ramp up again. So there's okay. and then also some of my um, 
field stuff like like uh back to belize at some point might might happen mm -hmm. you know and and also there's always nice. this field work with my students too on the local um archaeology stuff that also uh could be published and and worked on more which sure. which i'm really excited to do too so there's there's all all kinds of stuff well Anything? there you go mm -hmm. all right well i think uh we only have one more thing to talk about then and That's right. that is the I don't know if we have a name for it, but the segment we have coming up is pretty appropriate for uh, for this this podcast. Let me just give a little back history for those that aren't aware. When I started the Archaeology Podcast Network with Tristan Boyle on December 1st of, I don't know, we're seven or something like that. 2014, I think it was, um, or 2014. And when we started that, on like day one, we had already been doing the Sierra Mark podcast. I've been doing that with, you know, some of the hosts that are still on there, some old hosts that are no longer on there. And Tristan was doing his own thing. Well, we spun off two podcasts immediately. So we could call this network something that has more than two shows, right? So Absolutely. Uh, I know. So two of the hosts actually spun off the Archaeotech podcast that started on day one. Neither of those hosts do that show anymore. Now it's me and another host. And then another show that started right on day one was... Uh, the Archaeological Fantasies podcast with Sarah Head. Now, she has that whole brand around Archie Fantasies. That's her handle across social medias. And and that's where, um, you know, that all that happens. So she was doing the Sierra Mart podcast for a little while with us still. And then she was also doing Archie Fantasies. And uh, she was doing that with Ken Fader, actually, who wrote uh, uh, Frauds, Myths, and Mysteries. That's a brother yeah. as well. So Yeah, he's um, big time. Yeah, he's big time. Well, she was her and I were talking about the show like in November or something like that. And I was, you know, about what the show would look like. And and we were just on a phone call and I was just like, she's like, yeah, Ken Fader, you know, I want to just like there's a lot of stuff he's written. It's kind of a guide for, you know, the episodes. And I was like, well, why don't we get him on? And she's like, oh, yeah, as a guest. Yeah, that's cool. And I was like, no, just like as a co-host, let's just call him and just be like, hey, Ken. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. And he's just super cool. <laughs> <laughs> so he was a co-host for a long time. And then Jeb Card, who is also big in this space, yeah. was also a co-host for a while. And uh, so the show's got a pretty good pedigree. Well, for various reasons, Sarah took her show off the network uh, three and a half years ago, give or take. Mm -hmm. And she's still occasionally doing episodes of that, but she was just expanding her whole empire around Archie Fantasies. But, okay. but we still have the feed. And a, a long history of shows that are going in there. And Andrew has decided to take this on and reignite the feed. So mm -hmm. let's talk about that. What are you, what are you going to talk about? Oh, I'm so excited <laughs> for this one because I think, I think I noticed this. We, we were talking about the, you know, the various shows on the podcast. And I think you said, oh, well, there's, you know, the pseudo archaeology one that we haven't really done much. Yeah. I'm like, what? Nobody, <laughs> like, I'm it, I'm it. Like nobody else, too bad. It's mine. You I'm know? so like, glad like, you're doing it too, because uh, I love that that podcast. But it's yeah, ended, so yeah. Uh, no, oh no, 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 no. It's coming back to life, man. Like, yeah. like I, I just <laughs> it, it it puts a smile on my face just thinking about it. You know, that's so much fun, and I think it's so very important to talk about that yeah. stuff too. And honestly, with a mm -hmm. balance of like showing that yeah you know, the silliness and having fun with the silliness of so much of that stuff mm -hmm. but not making people feel bad mm -hmm. you know i always feel like there's yeah. A, yeah, there's definitely. a balance you, you can't be like oh you believed that oh well you mm -hmm. fool excuse me while i yeah. go back into my <laughs> academic chambers <laughs> you know like i i hate that yeah. so i want to yeah. be factual and have and, and have fun with it and show the audience you know oh but this this is really this and and show some of the backstory just pull that curtain back and be like look this is what's really going down you know right. and um i even feel like i've learned a bit more about that too actually doing being in the media world doing the things i've done through nigel seeing how that process works mm -hmm. be it a real show like i'd be on or be it a fake show like ancient aliens it's still mm -hmm. that they, they they are done the same way and love or hate ancient aliens boy their production value is pretty good you know it's huge yeah mm -hmm. true and yeah you, you have to you have to ask why you know and um yeah. and why doesn't archaeology do a show of that same high quality you know right and so that there's there's so much to talk about and there's so many stories and it, i mean the the material comes to you weekly on your newsfeed. you know <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, totally. Yeah, it really does. It really yeah. does. So yeah, yeah I, I, I made. Uh, I'm sorry. One more. I, I made some notes to myself. I was. I'm like, I'm going to make some notes to myself about what I could talk about, and it quickly just became pages. You know, there's. That's amazing. Yeah. You need that to keep the show going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. I think Rachel's got a little delay in her headphones. I do. Yeah. I'm really struggling. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so do you have, now it, we had to change the name obviously because yeah. Sarah, um, you know, took a branding with her, of course. Absolutely. Um, and we, we've been calling it the pseudo archaeology podcast because the feed is still alive. You can still listen to the back catalog. Mm-hmm. Do you know, are you going to keep that name or are you going to call it something? What are you I, call I it think so. Name? Because I think the word pseudo archaeology yeah. is funky and fun in mm-hmm. its own way. So why mess with success? You know, like the, yeah. the pseudo archaeology show. I'm, I'm yeah. cool with that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so that's, that's what I'm going with. I have my little tile ready to roll. So, um, I'll send, I'll yeah. send that to you. I have my theme music ready to roll. <laughs> um, nice. so, so I got all that stuff. And yeah, for the listeners, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes before you make this stuff go live. There's a lot of boxes you oh, got to yeah. check stuff like that, you know, like, Oh, is your theme yeah. music ready? You know, yeah. so I'm, yeah. uh, I'm in process, uh, and it's looking really good. I'm, I'm basically ready to roll so so look for that I mean, sooner rather than later I, I i was gonna say i was hoping for it sooner uh because we've been talking about this since like december but yes now i realize i didn't go through your agent so you didn't i know and my you know, handlers yeah and uh you know page six uh-huh. i mean they're gonna have a piece of this uh it's it's tough being me it really is the, uh, oh, you're about to have chris's as a boss, That's so right. um, no. enjoy that. Oh, Chris, <laughs> it's I know. fun. Uh, oh, sure. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Hey, everyone. Chris Webster from the APN here. We have used a number of solutions for recording our podcast with interesting people from around the world. None have worked better than Zencaster. For the last several years, we've been using Zencaster for high quality recordings that are easy to do and put little to no stress on the guest. And now Zencaster has high quality video and even automatic transcription. So click the link in the show notes or head over to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use the code TAS to get 30% off your first three months of the pro plan. If you're starting a podcast anytime soon, it's totally worth it. Again, click the link in the show notes for 30% off your first three months. And they even give a little back to us when you do. Keep this conversation going by joining our members only Slack team. There's always vibrant conversations going on over there between members and hosts about the topics we're podcasting about and more. Also get access to our back catalog of bonus material and ad free shows. You get all this for $7.99 a month or less than $80 US per year if you get the annual subscription. Support archaeological education and outreach by supporting the APN. Go to arcpodnet.com slash members for details. That's arcpodnet.com slash members. Save on O'Reilly Brake Parts Cleaner. Get two cans of O'Reilly Brake Parts Cleaner for just $8. Valid in-store only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Chicken tacos should only be trusted to chicken professionals. That's where we come in. Introducing Zaxby's new chicken finger tacos. One comes with pico de gallo and creamy chipotle ranch. And the other comes with bacon, lettuce, tomato, and avocado ranch. Chicken experts since 1990. Chicken taco experts since now. Order yours today in the Zach's Rewards app. Woo, saucy! Zaxby's. All right, well, I think let's go ahead and play our game, Archaeology or Aliens. So All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and bring Amy in. Amy, now's your time to shine. Here we go. I'm going to send you a request to come on screen. Amy. There she is. Hi. Hey. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We can. Yeah, awesome. we can. Awesome. So I don't think there's anyone else live right now. It's a pretty low attendance on today's show, which is fine. It's episode two, so I don't really care. That's um, fine. So we probably, uh, unless Amy wants to come, unless Amy, you want to come back on in two weeks, if you happen to be here, we may not have a, <laughs> uh, a comments winner. So, um, but anyway, uh, just to restate the rules for those who are watching this in post and, and for you guys. I'm going to tell you three archaeology headlines, and I'll actually drop them all after I'm done reading them in the chat here, so you can just read them again and, and kind of mull over them. And then right. we'll go, 
we'll go in an order that I'll determine. Um, Amy, you'll go first, and uh, because you're the guest, and no. and then Andrew will probably go, and then Rachel. Well, Andrew's a guest too, so yeah. Well, yeah. Amy is a Andrew's not really a guest though. He's kind of like a half guest. <laughs> He's a pseudo guest. <laughs> He's a pseudo guest. Pseudo, yeah, pseudo, pseudo, pseudo guest. That's right. That's right. He, wor- he works for Chris now. <laughs> that's right. I'm just uh-huh. that's right. Shill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so we'll do that. And then uh, basically the rules are you just have to determine which one of these headlines is fake. And right. there could be some aspects of it that are true. There could be, you know, um, I, I may have changed one small thing about it. Now, I won't change something like a year by a single digit or something like that. I'll make it like an obvious change. Um, or I could have made one of the headlines up entirely. Like it could be 100% fake. So you just okay. got to use your either guess or use some intuition and, and try to determine which one of these is not real. So let me go ahead and read them and then I'll drop them in the chat. So the first one is, oh, I forgot to mention, um, we're talking about Indiana Jones again, uh, the second movie actually in our Couple pop culture archaeology segment after this. Right. And uh, we had a big discussion about like Christian mythology and biblical archaeology and stuff <laughs> like that when her and I were talking about this last night. So all of these are biblical archaeology themed. Oh, no. (laughs) So am I going to be fighting with you? You might. You might. Okay. Like I was last night? Exactly. Yeah. So it's getting pretty heated at our little restaurant planning meeting last night. Let's just say that. Oh, you and Uh, Harry. I know. That's true. All right. So here they go. Number one is archaeologists found the location where Jesus walked on water. (laughs) On water, mind you. Um, Mm -hmm. The second one is archaeologists find 6,500-year-old pottery bearing the name of a biblical judge. And then the third one is the description of the biblical destruction of Sodom is supported by recent archaeological discoveries. All right. So, Amy, you're going to go first. And they are in the chat, so you don't have to remember what they are. Oh, my goodness. Hold on. Let me. Let me. uh, (laughs) So, two of these are real. Oh, they're in the chat. Okay. Yeah, they're in the chat. Yeah. Man, so last time I'm going to talk through my answer like they do on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Yeah. Um, yeah. Last time you guys had a totally obvious one that was not correct, or it was the wrong one. I thought. <laughs> I thought it was. It wasn't to me. Uh, no, 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 you didn't. You didn't guess that one either. You didn't, it, it was the other one. Um, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. So walking on water seems pretty outlandish. Like, because is that same water still there? Right. I don't know. That definitely seems fake, but hold on. I'm going to actually, I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm going to go with one. I was going to go with number two, just because that one seems like it might be true, but maybe you would throw that in there to uh, throw us all off. (laughs) No, I'm changing my answer. Two, final answer. Two, archaeologists find 6,500 year old pottery. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm going with two. Okay, change at the last minute. All right. Yeah. Okay, next we will go to Andrew. All right. All right. So hopefully my many agents, man, managers and handlers can text <laughs> me really fast, you know, with the answer to this. So I don't look like looking up the cool. answer. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I, uh, this, the same way that Amy just did it, I, I, I sort of am, am talking it through. And it's so funny. I had the same sort of thing because it's like, okay, number one is so outlandish but those kind of those kind of uh headlines come up all the time and it's not about the actual walking on water it's the location yep you know and it's like yeah Yeah. they'll say that um and then uh let's see number number three seems like just really cut and dry but see number three could also be one that was made up too because it's like eh, it's just sort of floating through the middle ground you know Good not point. too yeah, not yeah. too great not too terrible um mm-hmm. i'm uh, it, three could bite you in the ass so to speak it totally can <laughs> um but you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna agree with amy and go with number two and here's here's why right. um <laughs> simply because 6500 years is like a long ass time before um the the time of jesus and that kind of stuff it just seems very, very old. Now, it could still, you know, Old Testament be you know, hearkening back, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with number two as well, just because of that. Oh man! All right, it's up to Rachel. Okay, I'm gonna take these off while I'm talking through it because it really distracts me to hear my own voice. <laughs> okay, so 
I definitely read the third story. So I might be getting in trouble again where I'm making a decision based on not quite remembering the information correctly, but I definitely read something about that. So I'm going to say three is true. And then one and two. I, man, I was going to go with number one, but you guys are kind of swaying <laughs> me to the number two side. Uh, um, what do we get if we like sweep you? Nothing. You get to go again next week. <laughs> <laughs> I will walk on water. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to go with number one because that was my first instinct. All yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Well, we'll take these in reverse order then. All right. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> uh, 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 I, you know what? I, I, I do want to say what, one more thing as we were talking. I, I, had a, I had a twinge that I had actually read number two as well somewhere, but that's all. I'm like, but screw it. I'm staying with number two. I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sailing this boat, you know. I have right. to say, though, Chris put an article the last time that there was an article very similar he just yeah. changed something yeah. about oh, yeah. I'm yeah. Stay, I, yeah i'm staying i'm staying i'm staying with number two stay <laughs> all right well let's take these again in reverse order so the actual um the description of the biblical description of sodom is supported by recent archaeological archaeological discoveries is actually a subtitle of a another article because they wanted to basically say that right mm-hmm. they wanted to say that yeah. the actual article is a Tunguska-sized airburst destroyed Tal El Hammam, a bronze middle age, a middle bronze age city in the Jordan Valley near the Dead Sea, and this was actually published in um, this was published in uh, Nature, I believe. Uh, it's li- listed in scientific reports. Anyway, this one's true. This one's archaeology. And, I knew I read that story. <laughs> yeah. Now the leap here is is really. I mean, they uh, you can actually. It's an open access article, so you can actually go and read it. And the leap here is that it's the ancient city of Sodom, right? Like right. like the Bible mentions uh, a place, and they're just saying, well, this this place, and, and they've got some pretty actually oh. good evidence for this airburst event. We talked about this on TAS. I don't know if we did. We I talked about. We might have. You might be remembering the I don't ruins think you guys talking did. about. Yeah, no? Amy would know. So <laughs> I don't think you guys did. About it. Okay. Amy's our handler. I don't <laughs> know if you knew that. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. So <laughs> keep us in line, Amy. That's right. That's right. Um, so anyway, uh, oh, let me remove the focus on the screen here. So anyway, that is a real one, and they're just making the leap in the biblical archaeology people who are getting hold of this saying this must be Sodom because it kind of makes it, it's kind of where it's at, and the the narrative around the science actually fits the Bible. So that's what they're saying. So that's yeah. where that is. I actually thought that was pretty interesting because you know, to be honest, I mean, I'm not a religious person. I don't really care, but the um, I mean, if you can correlate that to a, a story that has been written down, I mean, there's no, nothing saying it, you know, it didn't actually happen in that way. I would love for something to be, to have like a, a real, you know, reason behind it. That mm-hmm. would just be yeah. kind of neat. So, okay. Now the next one, uh, archaeologists find 6,500 year old pottery bearing the name of a biblical judge. And that one is aliens. It's fake. Yes. Come yeah, on! Am I gonna go O for O? Mm. I'm yeah. two for two. So, oh. <laughs> or O for two. Oh my uh, so the so Sorry. the only thing I changed in here, and Andrew, you kind of hit it, and mm. Amy, it sounds like you might have been thinking it, is uh the real title is Archaeologists Find Three Thousand One Hundred Year Old Pottery Bearing the Name of a Biblical mm. Judge. Yeah. I tried to bring it I brought it back into six thousand range because I thought maybe you might think that that's too old for pottery, mm-hmm. uh, but mm. also you might be confusing because you know biblical literists say the earth the earth is um, six thousand years yeah, old. That's but that's right. so I thought that six might stick in your head a little bit. Uh, I wasn't really sure, <laughs> even though six thousand five hundred is not six thousand years old; it's eight thousand five hundred years old. Right. Um, oh no, this is no. Three, you no. said no. I, no. I said year old. I said year yeah, old. That's year right. Old. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, so. Anyway, uh, it's actually it's it's real. It's a it's a ceramic fragment, and it does bear an inscription of somebody that is mentioned in the Bible. Mm-hmm. So there it is, pretty basic. Right. Um, I'm not right. playing this game anymore. I know. I know. <laughs> Probably not. All right, and then and then the last one here. Uh, it actually comes from. Uh, 
Uh, oh, actually, I don't know what the source material is, but it's still pretty good uh, information. Archaeologists found the location where Jesus walked on water. So again, as you guys mentioned, it's, it actually doesn't. It, it, yeah, it's all it's all about location here and. The location that he is supposed, the lake he is supposed to have done this on, is mentioned in the uh, in the Bible apparently. Mm -hmm. And the, the funny thing about this headline is they actually haven't found it. Like they, it, there's really some some evidence of lakes that have been found that are no longer ex in existence. But there's actually two locations it could be. But I found like three or four articles that were saying, "Yep, we found it. Close the close the book on that one. Uh, we're good there." Wow. So. Anyway, we will link to all these so you guys can just really read read some of the crazy, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and what they are in the show notes. But yeah, so that was fun. Yeah. That, that was, was good. That was great. Yeah. So great. Yeah. <laughs> can I admit something real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I would like to admit that when I got into archaeology, I was totally into biblical archaeology. So when you said that, I was like, I'm going to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna um I used to subscribe to Biblical Archaeology magazine. Yeah. The, the B A R. There you go. Right. The B A R. Mm -hmm. yeah, nice. Man, I have to admit the exact opposite. I am so ignorant about some of the old world stuff. And it's embarrassing. I don't I don't say that to try and say, oh yeah, I'm so cool. I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, yeah. no, I am really, really slow on that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say I'm not very good either, even mm -hmm. though I yeah. grew up religious ish. But yeah. I don't know any of yeah. that stuff. <laughs> so. I didn't, so I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Amy, you're welcome to come back on next time with whatever guests we have next time yeah. if, if you're here on the show. So, <laughs> Or Andrew, you'll come if you want. <laughs> hey, yeah. Yeah. Every time. You know, right. I'll, I'll likely be here. <laughs> All awesome. right. That sounds good. Bye, everyone. Bye. Okay, bye, bye. Amy. Hey, all right, Andrew. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you on your. You will hear you on your podcast when it starts off. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm look, yeah. looking forward to it. All right. Yeah, we will. We will link to that. I'm going to get Amy out of there for her. And uh, yeah, again, thanks for coming on the show. And check out arcpodnet.com. I don't remember what the show slug is for that one because uh, because we might have to we might redo it. But yeah. actually, actually, I don't know if we can. Mm -hmm. um, but either way, well, you know, take a look at the. I'll take a look at the website and we will we'll bring that one back up with a new logo into the uh, above the fold so to speak into the the icons that are uh, shows that are producing because we have shows that aren't producing that are down below that are just in our back catalog mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, but we'll see that if you're listening to this and you are already subscribed you're looking at your podcast player going hey I never unsubscribed to that then you will just get new episodes when mm -hmm. they come out mm -hmm. so yeah the crazy as long as it's been like last three years or something right that they subscribed uh so oh yeah because yeah. we moved to megaphone yeah. yeah so when we moved to our new platform which is actually coming up on three years ago or coming up on four years ago one mm -hmm. or two uh then people are still subscribed so yeah. it should be good there so it should you should have a built-in audience because this feed even though it hasn't put out an episode in a while it still gets like you know a few thousand downloads a month <laughs> yeah. right so exactly yeah cool it's, but got it all right andrew right well hey thanks thanks a lot man congrats on the book and the We'll see you on the big screen soon enough. <laughs> but, uh, you know, whatever's going on there. So. Well, thanks Bye. so much, thanks guys. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. It's, it's always a pleasure. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time. All right. Bye. Thanks a lot, man. Bye. Bye. Is your vehicle stopping like it should? Does it squeal or grind when you brake? Don't miss out on summer brake deals at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Chicken tacos should only be trusted to chicken professionals. That's where we come in. Introducing Zaxby's new chicken finger tacos. One comes with pico de gallo and creamy chipotle ranch. And the other comes with bacon, lettuce, tomato, and avocado ranch. Chicken experts since 1990. Chicken taco experts since now. Order yours today in the Zax Rewards app. Woo saucy, Zaxby's. Did you know we have lots of great shows on the Archaeology Podcast Network? Head over to arcpodnet.com and you can see all the shows that are currently producing podcasts. Scroll down a bit more and you'll see some great shows from the past that still have great content. Search for your favorite shows on your podcasting app or listen right on the page at arcpodnet.com. All right. Back to us. Yep. Rachel can take off her dual, the headphones. dual sounding headphones. 
Okay, so now we are going to go to our pop culture archaeology segment, and I'm going to let Rachel pick this one up. <laughs> this is my segment, because I'm so into, I guess I'm into pop culture. I don't know. Am I into pop culture? I guess I am. You're very much into pop culture. I just, so I knit a lot, right? And because I knit a lot, um, I always have some kind of TV on in yeah. the background while I'm knitting, and I'm not even watching it half the time, but anyway, that's why I know so much about TV and movies and things like that. So last time we talked about Indiana Jones, um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, of course, because it's the first movie. And we wanted to continue with talking about Indiana Jones from a, with the eye of an archaeologist, basically, about, you know, the franchise and the movies and mm -hmm. what we like and dislike and that kind of thing. So we did have a very heated discussion about it last night. So we'll probably like rehash a little bit of that here. Yeah. <laughs> so Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. That would be the movie that came out in 1984. Um, just to jog your memories really quick, it opens with that, like, Chinese bar scene, right? Oh, yeah. The nightclub. Yeah, the nightclub. The nightclub. Yeah, nightclub. And the most annoying female character in all of Indiana Jones series is introduced, and she's singing, but she just is basically somebody to be there to squeal and scream and cry the whole time. But the one good thing about that scene, though, is she's singing that song, Anything Goes. Oh, yeah, and it's yeah. it's just, like, really catchy. It's in my head it already, is. and we didn't even watch it. It is. That's true. I actually yeah. really like the opening scene of that movie. It's <laughs> It's fun. But yeah. so that's the opening scene. And then there's the, you know, raft out of the airplane and they end up in India eventually where they're helping this small village recover missing mystical rocks and rescuing These missing rocks. children. It's, it's like one rock. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The one rock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I yeah, I love these movies, but I also like really struggle to keep the like <laughs> plot points in my brain because they're kind of convoluted sometimes. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's your that's your plot in yeah. a 60 seconds. So here's here's the deal with Indiana Jones. And I'll talk about this one more time. I talked about it last time. I'll probably mention it each time we talk about Indiana Jones. But we've got the Indiana Jones is an adventurer archaeologist stereotype going on again here. And in this case, it's not only the adventurer archaeologist where he's like not doing archaeology so much. There's no excavation or anything scientific. He's just like hunting yeah. down artifacts. And very in a very adventurous style, like you know, with water coming down a <laughs> tunnel at him and falling out of an airplane on a raft and things like that. Yes, and that's fine. That stuff is really fun and entertaining to watch. I think it's fine for movies. So I mean, that's how real archaeology goes. <laughs> it's not, but you know what? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not mad at it. Yeah, it's fun and entertaining. There isn't, however, and you might you might disagree with this. In my opinion, there's not very much archaeology in this movie. I disagree. <laughs> You disagree for the sake of disagreement sometimes. No, I mean, in the beginning, he's trying to buy, uh, like, an urn, I think, with some remains of somebody important in it. That's an artifact that he's trying to buy. And then he's going to find these this stone, and that's, again, just hunting for an artifact and... Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the gist of it. It's I mean, just, he's he's kind of doing his looter business. He yeah yeah. yeah well, he he's is. he's he's taking things out of the marketplace so they can go in a museum because that's where it belongs. Yeah, but even the second half of the movie, the main plot line, it's not even to put it in a museum; it's to return it to the people that lost it, which I guess is maybe a a better a better and, goal. Right, and this so, yeah, he's not really being a looter in that case because yeah. they don't they don't keep the stones to bring back to. Uh, uh, to bring back. So there's there's actually three stones, I believe. Yeah. And and together they have this like mystical power. Mm -hmm. um, individually, apparently, they don't do a whole, a whole lot, but together they have this power. And uh, in this one village that they happen in, uh, the stone that they have there was stolen out of the village. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Along yeah. with all their children. Their children are also stolen too. Mm -hmm. And apparently they were blaming the palace, and that that would used to be that was lying dormant for years. Yeah. And now this. This cult called the Thuggy Cult is now taken back over, and there's a new prince or king or whatever you want to call him. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for the remainder of the stones because it it gives them this power the, over yeah. people. Right? Yeah. Even without all the stones, they have a special power over the people. But with all three stones together, mm -hmm. it's supposed to get more. So he's happened into this village, mm -hmm. you know, him and 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 the short round, and then the girl Willie like, Scott. The, Willie Scott. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is that her real name or her actress name? Uh, actually, I mean, really... sorry, her stage name, her oh, character name. Oh, it's or... her character name. Her character name, It's yeah. her character name, but they don't really say... I don't remember Anyway, that's, that's what she yeah. got by in the movie, so... Yeah, Willie Scott. Yeah. So, anyway, the three of them are just, like, trying to figure out where they're going to be, and they end up in this village, like we said. And... Yeah. But here's where I think our, the archaeology aspect comes into this movie, and and maybe after I say this, we can talk about why we care if there's an archaeology aspect. Yeah. Uh, but 
the archaeology aspect to me is now the first movie had actual archaeology in it. I mean, well, kind of in 1930s archaeology. He had a transit. Yeah, like you know, find a site and dig for things. You saw him writing in a notebook. Yeah. I don't think you see that ever again in the franchise, but yeah. he's, he's writing in a notebook. He's, uh, you know, they're actually digging and yeah. true to what I would call, you know, true to African archaeology, he's got other people digging for him mm-hmm. and he just comes in when they find stuff. Yeah. But, but, uh, so all that is actually probably relatively accurate as yeah. far as archaeology goes. Yeah. But here's the thing. Archaeologists aren't just archaeologists. Archaeology is the is the science of data collection, mm-hmm. right? Data collection specifically related to humans and usually specifically related to stuff buried under the ground. Either buried under the ground or on the ground or, you know, on some sort of natural surface like rock art, stuff like that, or inside of a cave, you know, all those kinds of things. That's... Arche- mm-hmm. the, the science of collecting data about the structures, yeah, all that, the you science of doing that. The whole context, obviously. Yeah. I just get tripped up with this story in particular because it's not really that. I mean, it is a little bit, and he had to have some knowledge to know where to look for these stones and stuff like that. But yeah. it's a rescue mission to find the children missing from the village and also a hunting mis- mission. More like a, it should be, they should have called in, you know, the cops to investigate who stole their their stones, yeah. right? Yeah. Not an archaeologist. So I think it just kind of veers a little too far away from archaeologists for me. But like you said, we could talk about why do we even care? It's still yeah. a story about adventure and the archaeologist is the protagonist. So do we care that it's not really about archaeology? And that, that's where I go with this one. Is yeah. He just happens to have the title of archaeologist for his job, mm-hmm. but there's no archaeology in this. And you might be thinking to yourself, if you're not an archaeologist, uh, and you're watching the, the replay of this because Amy is an archaeologist, but uh, mm-hmm. doesn't matter. The, the, yeah. the, I think the reason why we're a little bit hung up on it is because a lot of archaeologists either A, got into uh, archaeology because of the Indiana Jones franchise, mm-hmm. uh, because he's an archaeologist, even though he wasn't really doing archaeology most of the time the job title got people interested. Right? Yeah, because so. he's doing fun things, so therefore the job must be fun. <laughs> yeah, we which all is, know the truth. I mean, it's another yeah. problem, obviously, but it's also one that it's like, is it a problem that you need to solve or not? Or can, you know, yeah. pop culture and the movie industry just keep doing their thing and making it seem, like, interesting and adventurous and sexy? And then, uh, yeah. I don't know, but it is kind of disingenuous, too, that... that nobody corrects them that they've got right. it all wrong. Although there have been movies that have gotten it really right and really well. So I don't know. I'm kind yeah. of torn about it. Right. And and also, it's just not as good of a movie. You're, <laughs> you're going to fight me over that one, but it's just not, it's gets yeah. so dark. Like with all the stuff that happens with the slave children who are being like beaten Pulling, with beating hearts out of people. Pull, yes. I mean, what? It's so dark. Yeah. And I don't know. It, it was so dark and parents weren't expecting it to be so dark that the mm-hmm. PG-13 re- rating for movies was invented because of this movie. Yeah. Like they added it as a warning because and anyway, so. I didn't know that actually. Yeah, I yeah. didn't either. That was something I came across when I was kind of reading yeah. about it. So a- Amy says Kate Capshaw is the name of the actress. Oh, yeah, got it. Right. Okay. Yeah, married. that's right. She married uh, Steven Spielberg, I think. And, yeah. 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 So, so who, who directed the movie? Yeah. 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 So. And the other good point that you brought up when we were talking about this is maybe people don't like Temple of Doom as much because it's not so much Christian focused archaeology, but it's like Hindu and Indian culture and religion. So it might be just like yeah. too it was too not it was too Eastern, too not Western for people. Yeah, the first two are based on or the the first one and the third one are based on Christian mythology, which, you know, I, I mean I'm saying mythology only because uh, not to disparage the Christian religion, but mm-hmm. but the cup of the cup that apparently held the blood of Jesus Christ and and now provides everlasting life if you drink from it. Come on, that's yeah, probably. I know, yeah. There's and a lot of and then also the tablets, <laughs> you know, the Ten Commandments that Moses took down and they put in the Ark and uh, Ark of the Covenant, but now it will level cities and lay waste to armies. I mean, how's that even a thing? So yeah. um, anyway. That's still familiar to, I would say, most of the Western world, mm-hmm. even if you've never heard of it. You know, those things have been in movies before. There are things that are probably talked about. If you go to church, you've probably seen pictures of something. But it's just stuff that we understand and know. Mm-hmm. And, and the other movie, the third, the second movie, Temple of Doom, it just does, deals with stuff that we don't know as well. So it's not something we want to come back to time and time again. Yeah, true. I mean, the fact that all the movies still have pretty high rating scores when you look at any sort of rating website and, and the Temple of Doom is is a little bit less, but it's not like a bad movie all the way down here. It's not Crystal Skull-less, so... Well, 
<laughs> just wait till we get to the fourth movie. Yeah, wait till we get to the fourth. <laughs> There's going to be words. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I don't. Yeah. I don't follow what a lot of archaeologists we've talked to say that this is, you know, the worst movie of all time, or at least the worst movie of the three original ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really follow along with that because for me. It doesn't have to have some sort of, you know, archaeological focus. Uh, it's I'm not watching the movies for that anymore. I mean, I may have as a child, but mm-hmm. now I just Harrison Ford is a great actor. Um, Short Round is awesome in the show, uh, in the movie. I love his I love his character, or the character of Short Round, and it's just uh, yeah, it's fun and entertaining. I know. I guess I'm just kind of like. I think that movies should be held to a higher standard only because kids are going to be looking at a movie, any movie of any profession and potentially falling in love with it and wanting to grow up and and be like the person they saw Mm -hmm. on the movie screen. And I just feel like they should do better in their portrayal. And in particular, this is a couple more notes I had that I really wanted to talk about with this movie is that India, the country like was super unhappy with this movie and the way that it was made. It was banned from Indian theaters and they didn't, they wouldn't allow the movie to film there, like in the pre-production stuff, they wouldn't allow any of it. And it's because of a couple of reasons, but like the depiction of Indian people and Indian culture was just not real, not accurate. It was very Mm -hmm. othering, you could say, like making them seem so different from the white people who were going to be going to the theaters to watch these movies. So they they really didn't like it. The depiction of Indian food, obviously not accurate. They're not eating chilled monkey brains or whatever, but it makes... Sounds pretty good. It made made you, as a kid of nine, think that that's what Indian people eat. And they don't. They don't eat food like that. So it, it adds this level of otherness to people from India or other cultures when this happens. And it's just... The big movie should be held to a higher standard. And you know what? This movie came out in the 80s. I think there is a higher and better standard now. So we have to like look at it in the time that it came out. But I wanted to to make sure and talk about that because it's important that the people that the movie's about have a say in how their culture is represented. I mean, by 1984, everybody in the 80s was doing cocaine. And, <laughs> you know. A lot of them were. I was born then. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so. so a couple um, historical notes, just if you're wondering what's real and what's um, fake. The Thuggies, who you've mentioned already, that's a real gang who were in <laughs> India. They did supposedly worship the, the goddess Kali, um, who is the goddess of death, time, and change. Now, there's some stuff here about the Thuggies. It's where the word thug comes from, by the way, in case you're wondering. I didn't know that. It is. For hundreds of years, they are supposedly responsible for robbing, swindling, murdering, especially especially travelers, because they would sort of ingratiate them with these people who were on the move and in an uncertain place in life and then steal, take, murder, all of that. Mm -hmm. And then according to resources in British colonialism was able to end all of that. They, They hunted them down, ended the gangs. By the late 1800s, they had mostly been eradicated. Well, in in the recent past, they've kind of looked at that and gone, hmm, did the British colonists really get rid of these gangs or did they invent the existen- existence of them, then say they got rid of them to make themselves sound like they were doing good things for the country of India? There's there's probably more work that needs to be done around that to find out yeah. what the true story is. There's definitely murderers that were captured. There's one who was supposedly the most prolific serial killer in the entire world's history Jeez. who was working in the 1800s, killing like 900 or something like that. So well, anyway, fun. I know. <laughs> so there's that's that. But that is interesting that they did take that from from real history. Yeah. And then one last thing really, really quick. The Sankara stone. Um, now, obviously, this that's what the stones were called that Indiana Jones is hunting for, that the, the village had stolen from them. Now, um, obviously, the exact ones in the movie that they're talking about, those are not real. They just made up those exact ones in that place in that time or whatever. But there are real stones of worship in the Indian it, or sorry, in the Hindu religion called a lingam. And a lingam is a representation of Shiva. And it was used for worship in a Hindu temple. So that hmm. is a real thing that could be out there. They do kind of if you look at images, they do kind of look like the ones that they use in Indiana Jones. So they had a you know, something they were basing it on, at least, if, even if it's not exactly true. Okay. So, yeah. There's your, there's some of your real history bits about the movie. <laughs> See, totally archaeology. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You're the worst. 
Nice. Oh, man. I mean, we. I think we fall on the side of we love these movies. We wish they had done a little bit better in the 80s, but they are what they are. And from a historical perspective, you can, you know, enjoy them. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, Amy mentions in the chat here, if you can't see that, if you're watching this in post, you know, mm-hmm. Loosely, the movie's loosely based on some of the things. Very giving, loosely. Yeah, the real the word yeah. loose is uh, is very loose itself. So. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that's. I mean, to be honest, a lot of good fiction is. You know, if you put some, if you put just a hair of truth behind it, it might be something somebody somebody pulls in their brain, and then you know, to give it that kind of cult like status, I feel like. I feel like if you cause somebody, and especially in this day and age, in 1983, it wouldn't have been a thing unless you, you know, went to the library. But mm-hmm. if you can Google some of this stuff and find out, oh, it looks like, you know, some of these things in this movie were actually true. So is the movie, you know, presenting us with something and, and new things and, you know, what's true and what's not and stuff like that. I think it just makes people get more interested in the film, to be That's honest. That's true. I mean, I yeah. have spent so many Wikipedia deep dives <laughs> while watching a movie because that, like, did this really happen? Is this real? So I yeah. I do enjoy a good <laughs> Wikipedia deep dive. Nice. I don't really go beyond Wikipedia, usually. When I do research for, for our shows, <laughs> then I will, but <laughs> not when I'm just watching a movie and I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I don't know if we're going to exactly do these in order. If something else comes up, we'll probably slot it in. But we are yeah. going to cover all four of these movies in a we second. We will eventually, yeah. We might yeah. take a break from Indiana Jones and yeah. go somewhere somewhere else for a little bit yeah yeah, exactly that's the plan all right well the last thing we're going to talk about this week is our site of the week yeah so we picked the thracian tomb of alexandrovo now this is a tomb that was uncovered in the Haskovo province in southeastern bulgaria near the town of alexandrovo that's why it's called that and it dates to the fourth century bce and I and I think it's pronounced Thracian. That's how I pronounce it. Oh, is it? But I'm not really sure. I, I yeah, I, I I think I've heard it pronounced that way, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's right. <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking. Well, you might be right because like Phoenician, right? Yeah. This sort of time, same time period. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Let's go with that. Say it again. Thracian. Thracian. Yeah. Cool. Um. So it was found accidentally during construction in the year 2000. And it was looted before it could be properly excavated, of course. Yeah. And what it consists of is a tunnel that leads to, like, an antechamber, and then it opens into a larger circular chamber. And that Mm -hmm. was where, presumably, the burial was. But it it doesn't – I don't – actually, I didn't find a lot about the burial itself. Either Mm. it had been looted or there just wasn't a whole lot to say about it, something like that. Yeah. Um, Both chambers are covered in well-preserved frescoes. Except, of course, for the ones that were damaged by the looters, and a couple were because it seems like they just like wreaked havoc on the walls. Um, but the ones that are there are, or the ones that are undamaged, are really, really well preserved. And the fresco in the main chamber depicts a hunting scene where a boar is attacked by a mounted hunter and a naked man wielding a double axe. Like it's pretty aggressive. <laughs> yeah. And they are Greek like influenced by Greek culture. And you can see that really in the images and in the color and the scheme, it really does look very Greek. Yeah. They say the tomb uh, might be that of the, uh, Trabali. Yeah. 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 It it was just a tribe that lived in the area, but apparently there's not enough info there to to tell exactly where that came from or who's responsible for it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been completely reconstructed in the museum center of Thracian art in the East Rhodopes. Rodepes? No idea. I don't know. Um, In Alexandrovo. So you can actually go there. It looks like in the pictures you can even like walk inside Mm -hmm. and see what it looked like inside. They just basically picked it up from this construction zone and plopped it down in the museum. Very cool. So Nice. Yep. All right. Well, that's it. Uh, Our next live event, if you happen to be watching this before that, (laughs) is April 6th. Yes. Uh, 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern time, all the p.m.s around the world, (laughs) uh, depending on where you happen to be. Yep. Uh, I think it's like 1 p.m. Hawaii time. I'm not going to do all the p.m.s. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because you'll mess them up and then it'll be... Definitely not the (laughs) a.m.s. No. And and you can forget Australia because they live in the future. (laughs) Anyway, so that's it. Um, Actually... You know, as we're doing this, our, our our one person that was watching this live with us has now left. Uh-huh. And so now it's just So now it's just us. So now it's, it's like us. we're recording our podcast normally. Yeah, and you guys are just watching. And normally we could, like, 
pause to, you know, like go make a coffee something. or yell at each other if right. that needed to happen. But yeah. no, we can't do now that. Now we're just recording live and <laughs> I'm not going to edit this. So anyway, oh, that's fine. This is that episode is two. Yeah. We're looking for consistency here. Definitely. So if you are watching this, um, go check it out. If you want to see these, well, if you are seeing this, you're, you're a member of the APN, so thank you at this point. Yeah, <laughs> Now that there's nobody left. No, but share it out to your friends and family yeah. because, and we don't mind, like, if you're going to share your link, that's fine. Like, can they do that? I don't even know if they can do that, actually. I don't even know. Mm, yeah, we can share their link. Yeah, to, like, watch the post live video. Oh, actually, you can't do that. Oh, you can? Yeah, you, you have, have to, to give them your in. login. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. sorry about that. Well, that's... anyway, like, I mean, if you can get around it, we don't care. Yeah. Go have a viewing yeah. party with your friends and family. <laughs> there you go. Put it up on the big screen. <laughs> oh, my God. There that's you go. ridiculous. So, Who would do that? <laughs> I know. That'd be awesome. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, again, thanks a lot. And if you didn't notice, um, links that we talked about including like the archaeology or alien segment are mm-hmm. down in the description for this show yeah. on the uh, APN page so mm-hmm. again since there's nobody left thanks for being a member of the archaeology podcast network mm-hmm. please tell your friends about it we're trying to use membership to eventually replace advertising costs mm-hmm. so we can take all that out but we can be member supported and do all the things that we need to do yeah like if we can get yeah. enough members we will make this show weekly you can have us in your eyeballs weekly I don't and know if you want that, but the 1,000th member, I'll let you drive the RV. <laughs> I'm just saying. Who Let's would want that. that? That's like that's like my nightmare. <laughs> I'd be like, thanks, no thanks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Should I have a T-shirt instead. <laughs> I know, I know. Maybe we'll just drive the RV to your house and we'll have an espresso martini together. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. So I'll make that commitment right now. The 1,000th member. So yeah. well, that's not going to be you since you're watching this. Uh, it could be one of your friends. Yeah, or family members. Yep. So, all right. Well, thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks for listening to The Archaeology Show. Feel free to comment and view the show notes on the website at www.archpodnet.com. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at ArcPodNet. Music for this show is called I Wish You Would Look from the band Sea Hero. Again, thanks for listening and have an awesome day. This episode was produced by Chris Webster from his RV traveling the United States, Tristan Boyle in Scotland, Dig Tech LLC, Cultural Media, and the Archaeology Podcast Network, and was edited by Chris Webster. This has been a presentation of the Archaeology Podcast Network. Visit us on the web for show notes and other podcasts at www.archpodnet.com. Contact us at chris at archaeologypodcastnetwork.com. This is Chris Webster, founder of the APN and one of the chief editors. Thanks for listening all the way to the end. If you want to keep the conversation going and support us along the way, go to arcpodnet.com slash members. That's arcpodnet.com slash members. And thanks for listening. Introducing Zaxby's new chicken finger tacos. One with pico and creamy chipotle ranch and the other with bacon and avocado ranch. Chicken experts since 1990. Taco experts since now. Woo saucy. Zaxby's. Chicken tacos should only be trusted to chicken professionals. That's where we come in. Introducing Zaxby's new chicken finger tacos. One comes with pico de gallo and creamy chipotle ranch. And the other comes with bacon, lettuce, tomato, and avocado ranch. Chicken experts since 1990. Chicken taco experts since now. Order yours today in the Zax Rewards app. Woo saucy. Zaxby's. <laughs>